Like, hey everybody, I'm Scott in this right school. That's right, Maggie. <laughs> and I am the world's biggest Scooby-Doo fan. And I'm gonna give you a tour of my home because frankly, I overdo things. Come on in. Here we go. This is pretty cool. This is one of the old animation cells, obviously signed by Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera. That's a nice collector's piece. That'll set you back about $2,000. Can you believe that's a lot of dew? I mean, dough. This is one of my favorite pieces right here. This is a, a little mini mystery machine for kids, and I bought it for my son, but unfortunately, uh, I am the one that rides it around the house. You know, the kids, what slippers do they wear? It's gotta be Scooby-Doo. When we have Easter around the house, we don't lay Easter eggs. We lay Scooby snacks. What are the kids' color in the house? It's Scooby-Doo. Can you imagine? Go for, hey, look at this. It's a Scooby-Doo talking book. It's also got my voice on. Come on in here. My son's name is Presley, and when we brought him home from the hospital, his first picture had to be with Scooby-Doo. Not with Daddy and Mama, but with Scooby-Doo. Now check that out. Everything in our house, from the blankets that grace the, uh, the seats is Scooby-Doo. Oh, here's a piece for me. This is my son's blankie. Well, Presley. My wife says I overdo things, and we always emphasize D-O-O. -O. I actually got this for my wife as a Christmas gift. Now, I gotta show you this. This is what really makes this thing very special. Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera actually signed this for Jody. My most sentimental piece is, a, is an old lunch pail box that my grandmother bought me at the store. This is actually the first piece that ever got me collecting Scooby-Doo stuff, and I was hooked ever since. Yeah, I'm not done. Come on this way. Hey, looky here. Y'all want some gum? I'm gonna get myself some gum here. Uh... <laughs> Snack. We got rid of the shower curtains. The basketball goal had to go. We've tried to condense it down. I overdo things. This is my fun room. Come on in. This head was actually one of the little tiki heads that was in the motion picture. And the director of Scooby-Doo the motion picture gave me this when I flew over to voice Scrappy-Doo in the movie. Scrappy-Dappy-Doo! da 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 This is the tag that was the mold that was made from Scooby-Doo's tag for the motion picture. Come here a second, let me show you this. If you'll notice the tag on Scooby-Doo, this was the mold piece that they made the tag from. So that's kind of a cool piece there. At one time, Warner Brothers coined me and marketed me as the biggest Scooby-Doo collector in the world, but uh, I've actually had to box up most of that because my wife was threatening to divorce me, and that was, I really had to make a tough decision, and, and I'm really gonna miss her. That's funny. I want to show you something. You're going to have to follow me here. I keep this stuff stored. Don't tell nobody that I did this. Wow. <laughs> it's Velma. Can you imagine? See, you see Freddy in the background there back there with, with Daphne? Now, I want to show you something here. This is where all of it's stashed, OK? Ta I mean, just stuffed animals like crazy. Uh, it's all Scooby-Doo. Look at all that. Can you get the camera in there? I wanted to put this up in there. Is that overdoing things or what? I want to thank everybody for coming into my house, and I appreciate it. And any time that you want to come back, please do, because we always make room for Scooby-Doo fans. And as Scooby-Doo uh, and Shaggy would say, like, man, have us over for dinner time because we're starved. Yeah, Scooby-Dooby-Doo. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Thanks for coming in. We'll see you. Come on, Scoop. Let's go. Hey, guys. Come on in. Take a look at our Scooby-Doo collection. My wife and I, uh, right after we got married, started collecting toys and antiques. We've been collecting about 14 years. And we traveled around the country going to different toy shows. And that's where we started finding a lot of the Scooby-Doo collectibles, like lunch boxes, watches, puzzles, push puppets, movie posters, plush dolls. Megaphone. Scooby-Doo cells from the cartoons. Oh, my. A cell is what they use to make uh, the cartoon, and for every movement, they have to create another cell. One thing that's really unique about this cell 
is that it has the original hand-painted background. Most of our cells have been signed by Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera. When you can get a collectible that's in its original packaging, that's just a big plus. This is a crushed stone craft kit with Scooby-Doo. This is a hand crank movie viewer. You can actually see it play the Scooby-Doo cartoon. But this is a Scooby-Doo Ben Cooper costume, like the ones I used to wear when I was a kid. Do you think I look like Scooby? Usually, once you've got your eyes trained and you look more and more, then you start seeing more and more. This is a light table drawing set. And you plug it in. It'll have a little light underneath the table right here. So you would lay this on the table like this, put you a clean sheet of paper over it, and then when the light would show through from the bottom, then you could just trace the characters and draw in and make your own cartoons. We didn't really realize what was out there until we found it. You know, you'd be at a toy show, and it's like, oh, gosh, I didn't know they created one of these in Scooby-Doo. Then we would buy it. You see the cake pan? Well, the really cool stuff, you know, you've got to go, you know, out and search for it. It's just not out there on the shelf. Yeah, do you remember the Talking Viewmasters? They had one that was a talking view master, and it would actually play a reel. So as you're looking at the cartoon scene on the inside, it would tell you a little bit about what's going on. I've got about eight boxes full of Scooby-Doo collectibles that I don't even have room to put out. Well, come on over here, because I want you to see my favorite piece. This is the wedding scene from Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. It's one of a kind, and it has so many special memories behind it, and that it would be signed by Bill Hanna. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's actually watercolor tie-dye outfits that they're wearing. And this is multi-layers of cells. Very beautiful piece, but it's a one of a kind. There was no more cells that was complete like this. Teresa's very fond of that as well. This is my nephew, Alan. This is probably my favorite piece out of all of them. And these are some movie story cards from the real live movie. Pins I like also. They're from the movie theaters, and that's about all. I would consider Teresa and myself to be the ultimate Scooby-Doo fans because we've went to no end to try to get the ultimate Scooby experiences, like going to St. Louis to visit the Limp Mansion, which is on the top 10 most haunted houses in the United States. And they let you take flashlights and roam throughout from the attic to the basement. And we were the only ones that was staying there. So we did have uh, a Scooby-Doo adventure. Wow, I'm getting hungry. I think we better run. So long. <laughs> Hey, I'm Scott Gerald. Come on in and see my Scooby collection. I drew as a kid, so come this way. It was nice to have a point of reference, you know, instead of just sitting in front of the TV and trying to draw it. And I started seeing coloring books and comic books and board games and things like that, so I started picking that stuff up when uh, my allowance would allow it. <laughs> I just really liked the show. I liked the structure of the show. It wasn't like anything that, else that was on. It had a uh, uh, beginning, middle, and end, and you always had to try to guess the villain, you know, before they figured it out. I've got things in my collection I don't know if I could put a price on. Uh, some things are pretty pricey, just depending on the age. It usually has to do with the year. But, I mean, as far as comic books, coloring books, board games, things like that, depending on the year that they were put out and what kind of condition they're in, that's, that's what uh, people try to put a price on. Comic books and coloring books are probably some of the earliest things I have. Here's some of the comic books that I picked up. So, a lot of those coloring books, um, the Scooby maquette that uh, they sold at, for a while, a uh, limited edition. The Scooby statue that I really, really like. It's like uh, that porcelain dog that you need in your house. This is a, um, a little figurine from Kings Island Amusement Park. After I started collecting Scooby-Doo memorabilia, a lot of relatives and stuff would like just send me things. So um, my nephew had a lunchbox that he sent me, and I'm, you know, I kind of cherish that a little bit. A few things I've gotten over the years of working on Scooby. Um, this is just a lineup from Pup Named Scooby-Doo, which was what I was, I was a show I was involved in quite a while at Hanna-Barbera. My favorite Scooby-Doo collectible is a lithograph print that was based on the presentation board for the show that actually sold the show. That's my favorite collectible. There's one thing that I'm looking for that I haven't been able to find. I had when I was, I think, probably 10 or 11.
that was a uh, like a give a show projector, and I think it was the first year that these came out in color. And I just thought that was the most amazing thing. I could actually sit and watch every frame and see how they drew it. And uh, that's the one thing I can't find that I wish I could find. It's something that my wife got me for, um, I think it was Christmas last year. It was a bowling ball that I didn't even know they made. I didn't drill any holes in it because I figured it's just going to sit. Um, the advice I give someone that's just starting to collect right now would be it's real easy because <laughs> there's so much stuff out there now. Uh, from t-shirts to coffee mugs to backpacks to anything that you want has Scooby on it. Because he's such an evergreen character and such a popular character. I can show you the, the biggest part of my Scooby collection, and because I've been working on Scooby over the years, um, and he paid for most of my house, I figured he needed his own room, so come with me. The bathroom. And uh, there's a lot of stuff here that uh, people have sent me over the years. Like, oh, here's a paper towel rack. You know, you need this, or here's a cookie jar, you know. I have, like, a lot of posters. Um, Bath towels, like I said, they put Scooby on everything now. Up here we have like cells from the actual show, like Scooby and Scrappy. Up there's a mystery machine. Here I have a cabinet with just all kinds of like little uh, PVC figures. Here's the action figures of the characters. And there's a little bobblehead Scooby. Toothbrush holder, cups, even stickers on the <laughs> on the toilet seat. More towels, posters, um, Christmas lights. Um, we have uh, Scooby snacks and uh, Scooby cereal in the bath in the uh, shower, just in case anybody gets hungry. It's really hard for anybody to take a shower though, because Scooby's usually in there. So this is my bathroom. This is my collection, and uh, that's it.